Welcome to the first episode of the Pit Village podcast. We've got a little introduction before, of course, but this is the first official episode I wanted to focus on building a business. So over the last year, I've built myself a little sustainable company. It's called Prospect 27. But before I got into business, you know, I come from a pit village, um, hence the Pit Village podcast. And, you know, I come from a working class background. My parents have provided me with a great life. Um, We went on holidays many times a year. But, you know, like my grandfather worked in the pit and then my mother come in this, up in this environment where she's just had to go and get a job. What my family afforded me were the comfortability, the ability to, to go to college and study. But what I found was that, you know, still, when you're in this environment, when you're from a village like I am, a very small village, the prospects there aren't great. Now, a lot of your friends will go off and get jobs. And from 18 to 20, essentially, I, I was a bum. I'd gone to college. I'd studied sociology, psychology, and business studies. And then I'd come out of college, and I was just disillusioned with the job market. I got into a bad frame of mind. And, you know, it weren't, it weren't nothing external. It were all internal. I think, you know, it was just self-doubt. I had low self-esteem. I'd never really gone out there. I mean, at 18-year-old, you're not meant to know anything. You're not meant to be perfect. And there's a lot of expectation of you. Oh, I had a house at this age and this and that, da 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 So it's like you start doubting yourself. And then I went into a bit of a slump. To be honest, I, I ran a little bit of an online forum and all this online and, you know, a couple of friends and da 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 but I, I never really progressed in my life. I wasn't doing much and it, it wasn't until I went back to college, I started studying counselling. I did an introduction to counselling and then I found a job. I found an apprenticeship at a local company, but she only paid me £300 a month and she had me work seven days a week and just working me as much as she could, which was great because I got a lot of experience, but... It were unsustainable. It didn't work out. After maybe five months, I left there and I just applied for a lot of jobs. I ended up then with a choice of jobs. Um, I, should, I could have gone to the Merion Centre in Leeds, a £5,000 £5, apprenticeship to be the marketing guy and build up there. Or I got offered a seventeen, a £14,000 a year apprenticeship with the probation service in Wakefield. That were closer to me. Flexible working hours, less hours for more money. Obviously, I took that route and I went into the public service. Um... And when you work for the public sector, there's little accountability. And what you'll find is you're an admin then. So what do you do then? You know, like you're an administrator. So your job is, it's boring. You're surrounded by 60-year-old women who, who've got no ambition. And your life slowly gets sucked out of you. I'll be honest. So in these public services, like in the public sector, there's no accountability because nobody's got to make any money because the money's there. And you've got to, you know, it's like everybody's very... It's all flexible working hours and all this to come in when they want. It's not like working for a business where you have got to be a profitable employee, which is for me, you know, how it should be, essentially. Um, so I got into this public sector. I stayed there for two years. It was very, you know, it was an easy job, but I, I did pick up a lot. And um, obviously, if I want to progress within the, the probation service and become a probation officer in line with the counselling studies that I've been doing for the last couple of years and, and you know, stayed within college, that would have been a great career choice and that was the aim. But eventually I got a little bit disillusioned with that and a friend phoned me up. He says, I've just got this job. It's in sales. It's like the Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street had just come out. He says, Carl, oh my God, it's like the Wolf of Wall Street in here. They've got a bar in the office. Every time you get a sale, you get a shot. They're screaming and shouting. They're dancing all over. It's unbelievable. You've got to come and get a job here with me. I'm like, oh my God, what's he on a bar? So I've gone for an interview, got the job, started with 12 of us. By the end of the first week, there were only like six of us left. They just sacked everybody who were, who were crap. And then, indeed, on the first day, they had us up dancing on all the tables and, and all this sort of stuff. And while everybody's, you know, making the calls. And I started to learn sales. And that was the first point for me. So to get into business, particularly if you're going into business to business and you're wanting to create something where you're working with other businesses... You need to know how to sell. So that's the first point of this, Of this, I guess. You know, like, we've gone a little bit into the intricacies, intricacies there of, of how I, you know, maybe uh, 
didn't get into business quick enough. So we, me and this friend, we should have gone into sales at a very young age, but we had never had no ways to show us, look, if you get into sales, you've got an uncapped commission, you'll be able to get on phone, sell to people, you'll be able to earn yourself a living. And we're both doing pretty well now, like five years later, or however long it's been. But if we'd have got into sales at 17 years old, we'd have, uh, you know, we'd have cracked it by now. So we're, we're just getting there, and obviously we see ourselves as these sales professionals. It's going to come on. This is one of my friends he's, who I started the job with. He's gone on and done well now. He's in a self-employed position. But I then went on. I got a job in recruitment. I uh, become the top performer at this company. And essentially I got arrogant, and I told my manager to get screwed one day. and walked out and never went back, and I wanted to set up my own business. And I'd always had this desire since a young age to set up my own business and go at it. I'm not risk averse i were gambling addict for many years so you know another another episode i'll cover that one but i mean um i wanted this risk i wanted to go into business i was i didn't want to gamble anymore I fed up a, you know just wasting my money on these also i want to gamble on myself so i took the bet on myself i went into business i went and registered a, a limited company which was the first mistake because i weren't even making any money i didn't have no customers i had no target audience so before you get into business you need to get your mind right so this is what I've learned. I did not have my mind right. I in all this debt. I got £17,000 in bank. No real desire to earn any money. And I just went out there with enthusiasm and just tried to sell. And it worked. And I earned some money at the start. But then, you know, I'd not set up anything for the long term. So I weren't building a retained customer base. I was charging, let's say, £200 to design somebody a website. Or give me £400 and I'll write 7,000 words worth of blogs for you that we'll publish over the next two months. And put that on your social media and all this. So it weren't a retained customer base. It was going out into the market, getting a job, doing that job, getting paid, and then having to go back into the market and sell again. And you're in a self-employed position then, just trading a little bit of your skill for cash at all times. Whereas the biggest lesson from that, that all eventually failed. And, you know, I quit and I went into an IVA on £28,000 worth of debt. Um, essentially I suffered a bereavement again another episode on that one later but you know I just stopped selling and I got depressed and I were in all this debt I were in above my head and all my money had run out and then you've got £700 worth a month in unsecured loans and uh, all the bills for a recently you know rented house that you just moved into so it's like I had to do an IVA and eventually I gave up the house um, but not. I did try and keep it. I went out and gonna. I, I gave up the business. Went out. Got and got a job. Tried to pay the bills for a bit. That job didn't last too long. And then I suffered another bereavement. Got a little bit depression kicked in again. And then I um, I moved back in with the parents and started another company, Prospect Twenty Seven, where I built a retained customer base. We I now charge seventy people thirty pound a month to manage the website. And you know I've been able to move to Leeds. I'm sustainable. I wake up and my own hours. And um, I've been able to learn a lot from those failures, those initial failures. So I wanted to share some points today. And I did have some, you know, key points to share from what I believed I learned from the, from the initial failure and first starting in business and how I've applied that to my company now, Prospect 27, where I've built a, a foundation that I can continue to grow. I can take a step back a little bit. I can record podcasts. I can, you know utilize the spare time that I've that I've got and um, I can sustain a life and, and pay the bills and this is what it's about if you're getting into business this should be your goal to live your own life to not to not have to get up and get on a train on a morning and go into an office or I know this is not the case at the moment with the coronavirus but this before all this I want to work from home and all this I didn't want to have to get up every single morning at seven o'clock because that's the worst thing because then i'm laid there on a night thinking oh i've got to get up in the morning i can't get to sleep i can't get to sleep if i've got to get up on a morning i can't get to sleep but if i haven't got to get up and i can just work my own hours and all this it's funny that i'm asleep for 10 o'clock and i'm up for seven anyway so i am up and i'm i'm you know but it's just the trap of being in a job i didn't like it so if you're in that position now and you want to get started in business Let's learn a little bit from my, my mistakes. So first and foremost, the foundations of my business were not right in 2017. I went out there, I tried to sell, 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 get the money, sell again, get the money. But then you're building yourself obligations to people for the long term and you're not taking no money off them. So they'll be phoning you for support for, you know, or they'll ask you, can you change this on my logo? Can you change this on this brochure that you did for me? And 
you feel like you've got to do it because you've took the money, but it were like, oh, I took your money four months ago, mate. I need to make some more money now. So you can never really get into that customer service mode. Whereas with Prospect 27, I have been building a retained customer base. £30 a month, no setup fee. The first month I sold five. The next month I sold five. The next month I sold four. The next month I sold two. The next month I sold seven. As you can see, it adds up and adds up. And on month 15, I've got like 70 reliable customers who now pay me. As I mentioned, so it's like I built something now. There's a foundation there. I continue to get paid for the work that I've already done. There's some responsibility tied to that £30 per month in regards to updating the website, making sure they're happy. But I can go into customer service mode because I've got customers to service. I built a foundation of customers. I built a customer base for the long term. I haven't gone out there, sold somebody something, left them with it and said, see you later. I'm off somebody else now. No time for you anymore. And you've got to build yourself obligations to these people. Now, I knew I was going into business with this in mind. Like, I want to build a retained customer base. So before I ever start Prospect 27, um, basically, at the end of 2019, I had nothing. Um, no job, no money. And somebody asked me to do my website. I said, right, give me 200 quid and I'll do it for you. But I'd already gone through all this prior. Give me 200 quid, I'll do it. So I thought, right, I'll use this initial £200 to get started in the business. I got started in the business, and then I got on the phone. I used that one guy's website as my portfolio piece. And I said to people, hiya, mate, I'm just getting back into website design. I'm going to offer a website design service, £30 a month, no setup fee. I'll manage it for you. All the hosting, domain name, email address, all included. Is that something you may be interested in? And I got on the phone and I sold, I used the skills that I built at Black Pearl and all these sales jobs. And, you know, the, the first point was to go out and learn sales. If you don't know sales, you shouldn't be listening to this today. You shouldn't be wanting to open your own company. It's as simple as that. Not a business to business company. It's not, if you want to be, you know, an hairdresser and all these things and maybe fair dues. But if you want to go out there and sell to businesses, you need to know how to sell to businesses. And you build yourself a sales process then. So, of course, for me, I go on Facebook, I go on Facebook business listings, I go through these business pages. If they haven't got a website, I phone them up, hi, mate, have you considered a website for your business? And I do that 200 times in a day, I get 15 to 20 quotes, I repeat the process for the week, and I might get two sales out of that. So it's a very, you know, it's, a, it's an intense investment, but then I've sat back at the end of the year and I've got a business that's got a £20,000 a year cash flow. That's, that's cash flow for this year that's going to come in. And I don't have to sell anymore. I don't have to get on the phone anymore. I can sit back and I can sponsor and record a podcast. And hopefully somebody listening to this might need a website. So then you can start going into these other avenues and, and growing the business organically. Once you've got a customer base and you can sit back a little bit and you're not constantly on the phone having to sell, 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 sell. Give us another 300 and I'll delete you this. Let me pay my rent this month. Because that's all you're doing when you're you know, you're in a self-employed position. And this comes from the Robert Kawasaki quadrant where he says that, you know, the self-employed people trade their time and skill for money and they're still continuing to do so. The businesses set up with residual income, a retained customer base where they pay you on a monthly basis. You know, the employed person gets employed by somebody and trades the time for money. And then your investment, that becomes your passive income when you're investing in real estate and other businesses that produce cash flow. That becomes your passive investment that you don't have to work and that continues to come. But I've not built a company that has passive income. I built a company that has residual income because there's responsibility tied to this income. I've got to do work for it, but it's a retained customer base. And this is what you need in business. So as I said, I went into Prospect 27 with this in mind and I set the correct goal. So I had a vision when I first started this company. I wrote down on a piece of paper you know, in a notepad, let's say maybe 2,000 times I've written this down. 100 people pay me £30 per month for their website. And you might ask, why are you writing that? And a lot of people were asking me that. Like, why are you writing that down all day? And I'm saying, oh, yeah, whatever. But I know why I'm writing it, because I'm drilling it into my subconscious. And then when I wake up, I'm thinking, right, where's these 100 people paying me 30 quid? Because it's a very specific aim. I'm not saying something abstract. I want to earn £3,000 per month which is obviously the aim, but the aim is 100 people pay me £30 per month for their website. That's an actionable aim. That's an actionable goal. I can then create, you know, daily 
targets to correlate with that. I need to phone 200 people per day to get 200, uh, 20 quotes per day, 140 quotes in a week. Three of them sell, one out of every 40. Then I've got three a week. I do that for 50 a week. I've got 150 customers. I retain 70% of them and I've got 100 customers within the first year. And, you know, next year I'll have a £36,000 a year business that is uh, got cash flow. So that this was the aim to begin with. You need to set the right goals. Before I went into the market, I had my mind right. I knew what I wanted. And then what you can do then is build, build the retained customer base around the skill, around one skill. So again, the one skill is website design. I'm not a generalist. I won't do your brochure. I won't do your social media. I won't do your SEO. I won't do your content. I will do your website and that is it. And I've had to narrow that down. And that is because I want to get good at making websites and I want to build a brand. And if you want to build a brand, you need to be a specialist because you need to create content that's going to relate to your audience and give them the right information in order to make the purchase. And if you've got to do that amongst five different services, you're going to confuse yourself. You're not going to get good at any of them services and you're not going to be able to do it effectively and build a build a niche audience. So you build the brand around one skill and then you build a niche audience. So for me, it's tradesmen, builders, electricians, plumbers. They are my audience. That's who I work with primarily. Landscapers, you know, just I can go out into the market and I can say, look, I work with 10 landscapers. This, this is what I've done for them. And I know, I know what drives them. I know, I know what type of people they are. I know what information they need in order to go. I know how to connect with them. So I know who I'm actually targeting with my business now. I didn't at the start, but I went out there, I explored the market, and then I built a brand around my first initial customers. So in February, I got three customers that were perfect. I got a mechanical engineer, I got a plumber, and I got a builder. And they're all brilliant, and they understood the value of my service. One of them had a website before that were bad, and they were paying more than what I charged, and my website were better, and, you know, a better service. So we understood that for 30 quid a month, like, how are you doing this, basically, he asked me. So it was like... You know, you get these people and they value what you do and they become your ideal customer. I was like, right, yeah, fair dues. This guy really don't understand the, the benefit of this service, this customer. But these three here that I've got, these three in, in, in February, like they know. So if I, I find, if I find 100 people like this, I'm sorted. This is all I need. I need 100 people like this. So that's the next point is like be selective in your customers. Make sure you're working with the right people. You don't want to get in business with people who are going to, not pay you, take advantage of your kindness, ex have higher expectations, you've not set the correct boundaries with them. So you learn all this. You don't have to be, don't get it twisted. You don't have to know all this to get into business. You need to know enough to get started. And then you develop all this over time. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that I've had to take all the lessons over the last two years and apply them to a new business. And you know, apply all the lessons I learned in the failure to this one and, and make this one stronger and better, build a retained customer base, set the right goals, get my mind right before I ever picked up the phone. And I've had to learn to be selective with customers and, and build this little niche audience because I have had people trying to push boundaries and, you know, it's like I'm not your marketing manager, mate. For 30 quid a month, I'll make you a website. If you need anything added to it, send me the content. I'll, I'll, I'll add it to it. But I can't, like, you can't be meeting me once every week and taking up a full day a week and all this for 30 quid a month. What do you expect? You've got to set these boundaries. You've got to learn this stuff and you learn it by getting into the race. So if you're wanting to create your own business, it is possible. Take it from me. This is the point of this podcast today. I'm just a regular guy. You know, I've tried, I've failed. I fell on my backside. I've got back up. I've dusted myself off and I've tried again. And this time it seems to be working. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I only earn a grand and a half a month. But I sustain an household, I've got a customer base, I've got responsibility, I've got purpose, I've got, you know, a reason to get up on the morning, I've got some spare time to record these podcasts and, and build something else as a passion and get some business acumen in this space. Because let's not get it twisted, podcasting will be, you know, it's only going to get bigger, it will be essential for businesses in the future and this is why I'm learning this technology today. So you can... Build the foundation that you've got. So for me, it's my website design company that funds this project. Again, sponsored by Prospect27, £30 a month websites, um, prospect27.co.uk. 
and then I can I can fund operations such as this and I can learn new skills and I can go out into the market in two years and say, look, I know everything about podcasting. Give me £500 a month and I'll produce your podcast. I'll brand it for you. Da, 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 da. And I can build a business around that if indeed I want to. So that is a, maybe that is the aim in the future, but hopefully this helps somebody today. A couple of lessons there. A, a little bit of background on me, I guess, for the first episode of the podcast. What we'll be doing in the future, I've got the next one is on getting a job in a pandemic. So obviously I've worked as a recruiter and as you can tell from the initial stories, I've had plenty of jobs in my life. So I can, I want to give some people advice out there who may not be, you may not be ready to start in business. You may need to go out there and get a job at the moment. And you may be thinking that there's no jobs and all this, but trust me that you can get a job at this point in time. I know that. So tune in tomorrow for the uh the marathon march we've got a podcast dropping every single day um again this is still very rudimentary we've got some interviews coming up i'm interviewing my accountant i'm interviewing um one of my customers who's a life coach i'm interviewing my friend who i spoke about earlier who is now self-employed in a sales role seems to be doing pretty well with that and we've got a a couple of more that's in the pipeline so hopefully over the next couple of weeks it won't just be me talking into this microphone but i am going to explore some more nuanced topics i've got some ideas obviously i won't be opening a podcast if i didn't want to you know express myself so stay tuned we're dropping another one tomorrow thanks a lot for your time and um the pit village podcast once again pitvillagepodcast.co.uk if you are interested in being interviewed it's interviews at pitvillagepodcast.co.uk Goodbye.